Ooh, those brownies smell scrumptious. They're for the school fair. Will you try one to see if they're okay? Yeah, who made them? I did. I'll pass. Please, Fuzzy. Oh, okay. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby. Oh. Mmm. Mmm, not bad. Mm, not bad at all. Oh, 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 God. Talk about noise pollution, guys. It's not noise, it's Beethoven. It's neither, it's Mozart. It's bad, is what it is. But come on, guys, if you want to hear stuff like that, hop on an elevator. Give it a chance, Tucker. My music class has given me a real appreciation of the classics. Corey, 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 look, I know all about the classics, all right? They started with the Beatles and died with the Partridge family. <laughs> Tucker, you didn't rake the leaves. Your father told you to be the man around the house while he was away at the convention. You mean you want him to drink beer and watch television? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, he lives here. Hold on. It's a babe. Thank you. It's for Corey. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's just probably, <laughs> probably some nerdette reminding you to renew your library card. Hello? Who is it? Yeah, this is Corey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, you, you did. Is that a fact? You like the way I filled out my questionnaire? Really? Yeah, I'm exactly the way I describe myself. Yeah, nerdy, hates broccoli, and showers with his underwear on. Go ahead. Yeah, after school, great. Yeah. Say goodbye. Bye. It must be really tough being a love god. You know tough? Tough is knowing you're genetically linked to someone who thinks a black hole is the opposite of a white hole. It isn't? <laughs> who was that? Uh, some girl named Joanne. She saw my understanding yourself assignment on top of Mrs. Tyrell's desk. She says I, uh, sounded interesting. Mm, watch it, kid. That's the same thing Glenn Close said in Fatal Attraction. She's, uh, coming here tomorrow. Says she really wants to meet me. Way to go, dude. Cosmic Five. <laughs> she probably just wants me to help her with her math or something. Take my advice. Go for the something. <laughs> Well, hello. <laughs> I'm Joanne. I called yesterday. Oh, that Joanne. I'm looking for Corey Brannigan. <laughs> you found him. <laughs> I'm Corey. Hi. Hi. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Oh. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Now, Corey, I have really been looking forward to meeting you. When I read your profile, I thought, now finally, here's a guy who cares about something else besides rock and roll and how cute he is. <laughs> you got it, babe. <laughs> babe? I mean, uh, Mrs. Babe. Uh, no, uh, uh Mrs. Lady? No, how about ma'am? 
you were kidding, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of knew from what I read that you had a great sense of humor. I like that in a guy. Ah, oh, well, then you'll love that in me. You know, my sense of humor is so humorous. <laughs> I must have every Three Stooges movie that was ever made. And for my money, there will never be another Curly. But enough about me. What do you like about me? Oh, well, you know, just about everything you wrote about yourself. You seem so mature and sensitive. We're not into that whole macho trip. I mean, you're the first teenager I know, besides myself, who likes classical music. Oh, I love classical music. He's not just weaving a web, he brought his own loom. You know, it's hard to believe there are people out there who think classical music began with the Beatles and died with the Partridge family. <laughs> and they think we're nerds. <laughs> oh, you said you read a lot. What sort of books do you like? The kind with large print and lots of pictures. <laughs> well, uh, what sort? <laughs> I don't know, uh, hardback? <gasps> I love hardbacks, too. Really? Do you want to hear something strange? For my 15th birthday, I asked for 15 hardback books. <laughs> isn't that wild? Wild isn't the word. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> hello. I didn't know we had company. Oh, Mom, I'd like you to meet Joanne. Well, hello, Mrs. Brannigan. It's a very great pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. It's very nice to see Tucker with such a polite young girl. It's nice to see Tucker with any girl who doesn't have a tattoo and four earrings in her nose. But Corey, why did she call you Tucker? Well, well, well Tucker is uh, my brother's name, right? Yeah. And sometimes she just doesn't remember. You know? She just hasn't been the same since they canceled the Glenn Campbell show. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, she has her good days and her bad days. It's been very tough on us all. Yesterday, she got lost in the bathroom. Yeah, I could learn a lot from this guy. Well, I have a haiku lesson in 10 minutes, so I better run. Oh, oh but listen, there's a rally for the environment on Saturday. We're trying to save the ozone. Oh, I love the ozone. I'll go with you. Mom, I'm home! Oh, who's that? Uh. That's my brother. Um, you better get going. You don't want to be late for that lesson. I gotta check up on mom. Oh, you're so brave. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> How am I gonna pull this one off? Well, you're not. But you'd have to turn into Corey. Wait a minute. Wait, that's it. What? That's what? What? <laughs> I am going to become Corey. Why, you dirty, lousy, no good. I'm ratting on you. <laughs> Did I miss Joanne? Yep, yeah, she was here. Yo, she was here all right, and Tucker really? here. What did she look like? Well, well uh, she had a double chin, uh, a pug nose, and she had this mole on her cheek the size of a cassava melon. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> ow, ow, nice. Hey, Corey, I gotta talk to you. Look what Tucker brought me, French vanilla, my favorite, and he didn't spit in it. Or drop it on the ground or anything. Yeah, speaking of Tucker, I yeah, really think. Isn't it amazing? He's been so nice to me lately, and it feels really great. You know, it's taken a long time, but I guess we're finally starting to jive as brothers. That's what Abel said about Cain. I'd be a little suspicious if I was you. Oh, Buzz. Are you, by any chance, jealous? Jealous? But no, Buzz. I just. Just because I'm getting closer with Tucker doesn't mean I care any less about you. Hey, Cor. <laughs> Brought you a new cassette by that Mozart dude. They said they'd phone me when his new video came in. <laughs> I better put my boots on. It's starting to get deep in here. <laughs> you know something, Corey? I've been thinking. You're a pretty neat guy who knows a lot about the world. I just want to get to know you better. For instance, what's that book you're reading? You wouldn't be interested. There ain't no centerfold. <laughs> Come on, all right? I'm really interested. Well, see, it's a discourse on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Oh, I love a good discourse. <laughs> you know, there's so much I could learn from you. You could open my eyes to a whole new world. Your likes, your dislikes, your interests, your opinions. I want to know everything about you. Well, if you're really that interested, 
Oh, this is great! All these years, you'll, you call me a nerd and a geek. Yeah, don't forget dweeb and wuss. <laughs> You're finally starting to appreciate me. Right on, Cor. You know, I don't just want to be your older brother. No, I want to be your twin brother. Preferably by Saturday. <laughs> Remember the one I was telling you about? Oh, I remember. Hello, Tucker. Tucker? That, that's right, Tucker. Huh? What's going on? He's been spending too much time with my mother lately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello, Joanne. Oh, hello, Mrs. Brannigan. How are you today? Um, fine, thank you. Uh, Tucker, if you have a chance, could you help me lift that rug upstairs? Uh, Tucker will do it. <laughs> Doesn't he always? <laughs> Mom, why don't you go sit in a nice soft chair in the den and relax? Oh. It's the big bulky thing with cushions and upholstery. <laughs> Thank you. Can I see you in the kitchen for a minute? Not now, Tucker. Not now! Right now! <laughs> Dren, one of us will be right back. <laughs> you thief! What? You stole my personality. You said you wanted to learn from me so you can have a fuller life. Look, if, if Joanne and I become an item, I will have a fuller life. <laughs> Don't you want me to be happy? In the first place, it's Joanne and I. In the second place, you said it because you admired me and you respected me. All you wanted to do was make it with the babe. Uh, 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 sexist term. Look, Corey. If you want me to say I'm sorry, fine, okay? I'll say I'm sorry. Look, I was desperate, but now I'm stuck. I promise I'll tell her, just not right now, all right? Please, come on, Corey. Tucker, you, know, you can't do that to me. All right, great. You're a great guy. I owe you. Thanks. <laughs> Is that dummy staring at me? <laughs> nah. <sighs> We're back. Well, I only stopped by to tell you that my uncle gave me two tickets to the Firebird next week, and I thought you might want to go with me. Oh, I'd love to. Really? You know, Corey, why don't you tell Joanna what you know about the Firebird? Oh, uh, well, it has dual carbs, fuel injection, uh, it has your choice of vinyl or velour seatings. She's talking about a ballet, not a car, you yuts. <laughs> What a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Well, I better run. I'll see you at the rally. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Don't go yet. <laughs> you know, I've got a great idea. Why don't you come over here first and let Corey make you dinner? He's a gourmet cook. What? Didn't he tell you? Oh, French cuisine is his specialty. I didn't know that. I saw him make a cheese sandwich once. You know, I'll even help out. That way, you can enjoy Corey and his food. Oh, that's so sweet. Corey, your little brother's terrific. Huh. Terrific isn't the word. Well, I'll 
I'll see you Saturday. Great. Bye. Bye. See you later. Are you nuts? How am I going to produce a gourmet French meal, huh? Maybe you could steal Julia Child's personality this time. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not doing this just to get back at me, are you? No, you like her, don't you? What? Well, I saw the way you looked at her. She said, uh, your little brother is terrific. Yeah, Corey's in love, Buzz. You're crazy! No, you are about her. But forget it, all right? Because she's not interested in you. She likes me. She don't like you. She likes you being Corey. And you know what? I'll tell you something else. You don't even do me well. Look at you. Your clothes, your hair, the way you talk. If you did me half as well as I did me, she wouldn't be able to keep her hands off of you. This table. I can't believe Tucker actually pulled this off. Well, it wasn't easy. You should have seen him trying to glaze that duck. What was even worse was watching him chase it around the kitchen. I told him not to get dinner at the pet shop. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to ruin this evening for him. Oh, I know. I can be rude, crude, disgusting, and loud. Yeah, forget it, kid. You'd have to turn into Tucker. That's what? What? I'm gonna become Tucker! <laughs> Let the games begin! Excuse us, Joanne. The boys will be right down. We're off to the movies. Good night. Corey, I'm waiting. Coming. Coming. <laughs> Good evening, Joanne. Corey, uh, you look so different. Yes, well, I always dress for dinner. <gasps> oh, everything looks so beautiful. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Just a dash of this, a touch of that. Who is he kidding? It took him two hours just to light the oven. Well, how about some music? This isn't happening. Please, Dan, <laughs> <laughs> That was a big idea. Hey, you took my personality. Whose was I supposed to take? Regis Philbin isn't using his. <laughs> Besides, if I can't have Joanne, I'm gonna make sure you can't have her either. Oh, come on, Corey. I've spent the last eight hours in the kitchen trying to keep my souffle from falling. Don't you think that's punishment enough? No! Look, Corey, you're just gonna have to face it, all right? Joanne can't resist me. Uh, I, mean, I mean you. Look, there's nothing you as me can do to ruin this evening. I'm so glad we could have this intimate meal together. Me too! Huh. Doc Lorange, a piece of my resistance. Oh, well, it looks delicious, Corey. May I carve for you? Allow me, babe! There we go. There you go. Save me the pot that goes over the fence last. <laughs> Poor little guy. Never knew what hit him. Uh, do you have any salad dressing? Yeah, give me a minute. Mom threw it away, but I don't think the garbage man have come yet. You have to excuse Tucker. He sometimes gets a little free-spirited. Well, actually, I think he's kind of cute. So, are you excited about going to see the Firebird? Oh, indeed. That Stravinsky fellow is really awesome, uh, uh, inspiring. Nice save. I brushed off those flies. Check, please. Uh, I think we need some more potatoes. Would you help me in the kitchen, please, Tucker? No problem. See, they're on the bottom of my shoe. I haven't finished mashing them yet. I need your help now. Be right back. Just come right up. <laughs> Would you knock it off? You're ruining everything. Me? <laughs> I'm sure she was impressed. When you reveal that a saltine is French currency. And for your information, the Cold War had nothing to do with winter in Vietnam. Hey, look, if you don't like my personality, just give it back. Fine, and I want mine back. You got it. I can't stand being a nerd. No woman is worth it. Well, yeah? Well, I can't stand being an airhead. <laughs>
Joanne, there's something we have to tell you. No, I didn't mind. You both had your charms. Had? To be honest, I found Tucker was more interesting as Corey, and Corey, you were a lot more fun as Tucker. Personally, I didn't care for either of them. <laughs> but cheer up. I think my friend Jenny might like you, if you act like you. I can do that. What about me? <laughs> well, Corey, I think I'm a little old for you, but I do have that extra ticket to the Firebird. Oh, the Firebird? You're on! <laughs> Way to go, dude. Cosmic Five. <laughs> your brownies go over at school? I sold out. That's the good news. Yeah? What's the bad news? <laughs> um... <laughs> Thank you.